Thank you. Uh, Go is a great language to build web servers with, but uh, we still have a problem with uh, slow web requests. So let's say we have this uh, package, and it contains this slow job structure, and it takes about 10 minutes to process one of these. If we build our handler the usual way, just plain, we know that we're in for trouble. We're going to have uh, users are going to get frustrated. They're going to hit the reload button. They're going to think it's broken. We're going to have proxy timeouts and what have you. So there's a standard solution for this, and it's the job queue. So now we would have our web server, and it would receive a slow request. In response to this, it would create this uh, work package. It would stick it into the job queue, and it would respond immediately. And meantime, this other background worker is doing the real job here. Now, this is fine, but it's yet another piece of infrastructure that you need to maintain and deploy. And uh, something else was going on here, and it's that your slow job is now going to execute in a separate process. So you need to incur the cost of serialization and deserialization. Um, and this for me was very bad because my slow job structure included this file which was uploaded by users, and that could be hundreds of megabytes. You wouldn't even serialize this into something um, like Beanstalk. You'd first push it to something like S3, and then you'd serialize it and deserialize it. And I thought, it has to be easy to do something better than this with Go. And indeed it was. So this was my first solution, and it's we're going to make a queue with channels. So we're going to add a channel to the handler, we're going to identify jobs with a ticket ID, and we're going to keep track of progress in a database. And we're going to send jobs to the channel. There's going to be a Go routine in the background listening for new jobs coming into the channel. So we have this uh, slow request, which is no more than a job with a ticket ID for tracking. Our handler is now going to have a channel of these slow requests and a database to keep uh, track and to get tickets. Here's how we would build the handler. We'd just instantiate the queue, and we'd make this go routine that just sits in a loop, waiting for jobs to come, processes them, publishes uh, into the database. And here's how we serve requests. We just get the job from a request, we get a new ticket, we build this slow request object, and we send it to the queue. But, you know, queue uh, sends are um, synchronous, and they may block, and they may wait. So we're back to square one. No, not really. It's really easy to fix this. You can add a time limit to the send. You can add a channel buffer with enough capacity, or you can add more worker go routines. But I was annoyed with this. It seems that there's this new dimensioning problem to add to our existing server, and I thought there has to be something better. This was my second solution. So now our handler is going to make a go routine on the fly and delegate the work to it, and we're still going to identify jobs with a ticket ID and um, track progress in the database. We don't need a channel anymore. So here's how we would serve requests. We would get the job and the ticket again, as we had before. Now we spawn directly this Go routine that's going to handle the work in the background. And this works very well. But uh, there's a problem here, and it's if, you do, if we do a server shutdown, we're going to kill the background jobs. It's easy to get around this. We just do a wait group. We add a wait group to the handler, and we do some arithmetic on the wait group to make sure that it's always positive while we have uh, go routines in the background, and this works really well. You could think of other improvements, such as cancellation or monitoring or uh, saving state quickly, but here's where I want to stop, because I just wanted to remi remind you that you can handle slow requests entirely in your Go server. Thank you. <laughs>